let me reiterate that the COVID-19 has, of course, thrown up multiple challenges, the fallout of which continues in some aspects or other for many industries. For our industry, uh, the seafood industry, that is an export-oriented industry also, which primarily uses wafer uh, uh, containers, it has meant that key consumption events such as celebrations have gone down, restaurants have been closed, and the demand for shrimp from these centers has seen a downward trend last year. However, there has been an uptick and compensatory demand that has been flowing from in-home consumption during the past year, leading to increased sales at supermarkets and shops. Perhaps the most challenging aspect of the year has been the turmoil that was caused in the transportation of our products with container not being available and vessels uh, being cancelled. There was a high demand and the availability of workers uh, in shortage due to various, uh, uh, sorry, the availability of various logistics related uh, workers uh, due to various SOPs of different countries with uh, uh, release uh, to the minimum uh, percent of 30% of the employees, etc. There have been inordinate uh, delays caused in shipments uh, with, with regard to our industry. If I were to explain the year on a quarterly basis, in the first quarter, we saw a sharp dip in demand, labor availability, and transportation. Things improved in the second quarter on the demand and labor availability, but transportation remained an issue. In the third quarter, demand was stable, however, transportation now more specific to global logistics pertaining to shipments was a big issue. For the fourth quarter, which is traditionally a weak quarter for the industry, demand was strong and growing, and things looked to be getting better. Now, coming to the impact of this on our financial performance, even in this challenging period where restaurant demand had been reduced for the most part, we have achieved about 96% of our pre COVID sales volumes, which is an indication that the demand for our products and our long-standing relationships with our customers is, has been going strong. The realization for our products continues to improve on the back of improving product mix. The share of higher margin ready to eat products contributed over 21% in the Q4 FY21 and about 15% in the full year. We see this as a strong driver for future growth in both top line as well as the margins. As you are aware, the government reduced and actually removed the total benefit of MEIS, Merchandise Export Initiative Scheme, from the month of uh, September uh, to uh, December 2020. And this continued completely from, uh, from Jan 1st, 2021, without the replacement scheme being operationalized. In spite of this, our EBITDA margins remained almost flat on the back of the improved product mix and operational efficiencies. With the first full year of operationalization of the new plant being this year, our depreciation expense was uh, it went up, uh, and further the transportation issues resulted in increasing of our working capital requirements due to higher receivable days and inventories which were getting stuck because of the lack of equipment for shipping uh, the products. And this also, uh, also there was additional costs with re related to logistics, primarily the freight costs, which had, um, it had gone up by almost 2 to 3 to 300% uh, compared to pre-COVID levels. This resulted in a pack reducing to 44 crores for FY21 from 60 crores in FY20. A quick update on the progress of our other efforts. On the hatcheries, uh, as we have stated in our last call, we have discontinued the lease facility and the construction of the phase two of the hatchery at Angol is completed. We are awaiting regulatory approvals and audits for the facility to commence commercial operations. With this, our entire hatchery related requirements are sourced in-house. With regard to the farming, farming operations of the com company, 
we have been indicating over the last few quarters, and I personally have been informing the over the quarterly contracts that we want to focus more on the core activity of processing and export, and accordingly been consolidating the extent of area under farming for the company. In the past fiscal, our consolidation efforts have culminated, uh, culminated, and we now only own about 120 acres of farmland. This will, however, be assisted. This is assisted. Uh, by the hatchery business with regard to the seed supply, which is, uh, of course, primarily meant for developing our relationships with the farmers, which is also going to pave way for ways to uh, look at more buyback arrangements and have our uh, network building as well as uh, contract farming with uh, minimal investments through the seed supply. And we make our relationships with our farmers much stronger by giving them quality seed and also you know, do the buyback of raw materials from them. Now coming to the outlook for the industry, the, all the closures which were there uh, during the past year, uh, especially those which were partially closed, unfortunately the, the restaurants, the food service segments, which were a sector which was closed completely, permanently, uh, has not yet been restored by replacements, but uh, several restaurant chains have reopened, and now they are working, uh, especially in the U.S. market, in, uh, they are working at 100% occupancy, um, thanks to the uh, uh, high number of vaccinations which have been done in that country, um, uh, and so the life is getting back to normal you know, in USA especially. And hence, uh, our exports uh, to our largest market, USA, continue to be going steady. And we look forward to growing it further as we are able to improve our capacities over the next uh, one to two years, uh, subject to the logistics issues being uh, resolved at the earliest. The, EU, uh, the European Union, which is our second largest market, the consumption has been stable. Uh, in fact, the demand has picked up similar to the USA uh, because of the food service sector opening back. Vaccinations are also happening uh, in good number. We have had an increase in inquiries from the EU market of late, uh, especially during the past uh, three to four months. And we are uh, looking at uh, we're going at uh, part of the market also. China, where the company primarily does uh, commodity shrimp, mainly in the form of headless blocks, uh, we have uh, been still maintaining it at a lower level, lower level because the company mainly has been focused on value-added products, both in the raw format as well as, I mean, sorry, ready to cook as well as in the ready to eat. We are looking at uh, value-added uh, products mainly. And hence, our exports to China will continue to be minimal. And, uh, however, uh, with regard to the Chinese market, the, there were some constraints, uh, some uh, restrictions on some companies. Uh, not Apex frozen foods. I would want to reiterate that and hear from. I uh, just want to give a clarity on that uh, because there was some news. We don't have any issues. It's a, generally there are, there are there are conditions at some of the Chinese ports where we are not able to ship, but we are able to ship to the other ports where uh, the, the, there is not much of uh, problems, and we are continuing to do our shipments to China as we get the containers. We don't we, our company doesn't have any restrictions uh, laid out by the Chinese government, as stated by some sections of the media and to be precise, social media. Uh, with that, I now request Mr. Vijay Kumar, our CFO, to take you to the brief highlights of our financial performance. Mm -hmm. Vijay Kumar. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And hope all of you are keeping safe. I shall brief you on the financial highlights of the quarter and full year gone by. As mentioned earlier, our product mix has been improving with higher proportion of retail and the value-added products, which have aided the overall relations. For the quarter ended March 31, 2021, our export revenue grew by a strong 38% to 
year on year and 15 percent quarter on quarter to rupees 1732 million as against rupees 1256 million in q4 fy20 and rupees 1500 million in q3 fy21 the growth in export revenue was the result of import volumes which grew by 30 percent year on year and 22 percent quarter on quarter to 2656 metric tons in q4 fy21 and higher average relation of our dollar 9 per kg of shrimp sold despite a challenging year and lower volume for full year fy2021 to the export revenue grew by 3 percent year on year to rupees 7705 million the sales volume decreased by 4 percent year on year to 11701 metric tons as far as the profitability is concerned ebitda margin were not materially impacted considering the challenging environment comprising limited dispatches higher fixed cost due to lower utilization of our newly expanded capacity lower exported export incentives and such others this was an outcome of our improved product mix and operating efficiencies the ebitda for q4 fy21 grew 14% year on year to rupees 212 million and accounted for 11.5% ebitda margin for the full year fy21 ebitda came in at rupees 985 million as against rupees 1060 million in fy2020 on the margin front fy2021 clocked 11.9% ebitda margin as against 12.5% in fy2020 a margin fall fall of 60 dbs year on year further higher depreciation due to the due to commissioning of the new plant coupled with increased finance costs due to elongated working capital cycle as both inventory and data cycle were stretched due to transportation issues resulted in decline at tax level the tax for q4 fy2021 came in at rupees 84 million versus rupees 92 million in q4 fy2020 and for the full year fy2021 at rupees 443 million as an earnings rupees 606 million in fy2020 the geographical breakup of sales in fy21 is as follows 81.6% came from us about 14.3% from eu, EU while the balance 41.4.1% came from china with that i conclude our opening remarks and now i request the moderator to open the floor for questions thank you thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touch tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles The first question is from the line of Ashwini Agarwal from Ashmore Investment Management. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good morning, Mr. Sadri. Uh, good uh, numbers, uh, you know, in a reasonably tough environment. Um, I just wanted an update from you on the U.S. regulatory side. Um, uh, so, for some types of uh, products, uh, I think one of your facilities was listed on an import alert in December. and one line uh, was reported to have been turned back sometime in march uh, and just yesterday uh, there was a us fda alert on salmonella infection in avant pcs ready to eat a product line and a product recall uh, i mean you know your focus has been to increase the ready to eat uh, and pre prepared uh, uh, shrimp especially in the US market i mean how are you seeing this risk evolve and how are you addressing the problem yeah yeah this has been uh, first uh, first of all thanks for coming on to the call uh, we there are uh, i need to first uh, sorry discount your question about uh, our ntc as uh, i'm not the person to be answering about them but since you are asking about the general system or the risk perception with regard to the us market as such um regarding the alert which you are referring to about apex frozen foods it's about 
antibiotic related issues for which yeah in fact uh, since uh, january consignments have been tested and they have been released this particular uh, we have been put on the alert of because of one specific confinement uh, which was uh, having an issue that the one line item as you rightly mentioned uh, even though there are multiple line items in the confinement so of course this was all the uh, products which were primarily handled and shipped uh, during last year when uh, because the covid issues were there and otherwise uh, we don't normally have issues related to antibiotics as the testing is done pre harvest and also prior to uh, you know processing at the factory so we don't really have issues in fact we know when there is a positive and we do maintain uh, stocks of antibiotics uh, products right? because there are that's how we test we know that uh, that products have such contaminants if any so now in this case as i had mentioned there was a specific issue and uh, that has been uh, dealt with however uh, the consignments subsequent to that have been held and tested and released and even that one particular consignment which the uh, fda has uh, had an issue with it was actually retested and there were no problems uh, pertaining to that uh, that is with regard to specific uh, antibiotic alert uh, that is and in fact we are in the process of um, getting our name our one specific facility being removed out of uh, out of that alert so it's not an issue uh, we don't really see it as an issue because uh, we take care of uh, we mitigate the risk by prior testing number one and uh, in general uh, i have been stating this for the past uh, few years uh, since we got listed that any market which we want to do business with expects has its own set of rules and norms it is there uh, it is at their discretion to test for in the specific product of the specific parameter what they want to so definitely if we are to do business with a specific market we have to uh, implement the rules but however when it is a laboratory testing we all have to have an understanding and i'm pretty sure now nowadays everybody has a clue about that with regard to covid like how there are possibilities of having false negatives there are also possibilities of having false positives that particular phrase of false positives actually applies to quite a number of companies which have their own systems and protocols in place the required systems and protocols in place sorry and uh, that of course indirectly i would also answer on behalf of anybody else whom you want to refer to but that is how it is there are uh, with the amount of systems in place uh, on the protocols because these are required by the importing countries whether it is usa or european union so when 20 to 25% of our approximately around 20% of our business goes to eu we have every alternate container every second container being tested in eu also for antibiotics but whereas we ensure that these products go to don't do not go to those markets and we ensure that we don't handle them so in fact after this particular issue we have also intensified our own uh, segregation and basically refusing the lots at any uh, such specific uh, source level so that we don't have to deal with any uh, replication subsequently so that is the general point about uh, the alert but there it is not uh, a risk it is of course uh, it could be we just need to implement it at uh, you know at our uh, entry level to be precise so that we don't need to deal with any uh, you know uh, headaches or problems at the end at the finish finishing uh, finishing finish line i hope you understand that Sir, so and on Salmonella specifically, I know you may not want to comment on what's happened to another company, but is that a risk only for pre-ready to eat, or is that something that happens even for ready to cook? And have you faced that problem in the past ever? No, we have not faced that problem. But uh, as I'm uh, saying, that issue will be there for all products, from fish in general for seafood. Uh, any raw products raw meats even chicken so when they would be testing they they intend to test they will test if they want to intensify their testing they would like eu does it for the past uh, i think 6 years or 7 years since they have been testing every second container for antibiotics for example like that usda has its own set of norms like how indian um, um, uh, you know uh, 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 rules of uh, import uh, departments like animal husbandry or phytosanitary 
uh, the conditions which they implement. So that is uh, that is there for all the products. It's not about only cooked or ready to eat or uh, ready to cook. It, it will be there for all the products. They can test. It is, as I said, it is in the, uh, so we have to implement the system, whether it is testing or whether implementing the right process. And that is how we ensure that we avoid uh, any complications at the finish line. However, it does not mean that if there has been a test positive or if there is an alert, it doesn't mean that the system, there is a system failure. Uh, because they, as, as I had tried to mention earlier, like how you are noticing quite a number of false positives and I mean you know because it's a laboratory test it is all uh, it depends on what equipment is used and the, the, you know the, the time of the person who has handled the testing etc and errors are there uh, with regard to machine readings also so that is how uh, it is so but uh, salmonella is there for all products not just uh, shrimp or not just ready to eat it will be there for them okay and so on the, the second question I had was uh, relating to the working capital inventory increase. Obviously, because shipping uh, times have increased and the duration that it takes for a resort to show up in the U.S. has increased, uh, that would be, I'm assuming, the principal cause of the increase in receivables. Um, is, is that the only reason or is there something else uh, also which is causing your receivables to spike up uh, from roughly about 70, 80 crore levels to 150 crore oh, no, no. levels? Oh, there, there are two things. Uh, one is primarily the container-related issue, which is going at a, you know, we get uh, payments of around 40, 45 days, 50 days sometimes. It's increasing depending on the ports. But then there has also been certain amounts of testing at that point of time, which, of course, post-testing, we got the remittance realizations from the customers also. So we uh, that's how the containers all got clear. Then we got the payments. That's how uh, there has been a, a delay. There's been a stretch in the uh, receivable uh, period. But in the working capital, even the inventory uh, period also got stretched. Uh, the pre-shipment uh, uh, finding also got stretched because of the delays in shipments. Even though the product was packed, we just could not ship. Either. Every day uh, we speak uh, uh, for the past uh, two and a half quarters, uh, even the current quarter. And I, I, we do not know when this issue is going to get resolved immediately. But at this point, we at any given point of time, our company continues to have around 40 to 50 containers worth shipments, um, you know, for 40 to 50 shipments, sorry, worth uh, an average value of one crore and above. So, you know, especially when the unit value is also increasing. So that is always blocked. This is over and above our regular inventory in process inventory. So this, uh, hopefully, the issues with regard, regard to the logistics and container shortages will get cleared, um, you know, at the earliest. And we, we can have a shorter working capital cycle both in the post-shipment as well as pre-shipment. Okay. Great. Um, I have some other questions. I'll come back in the queue. Uh, all the best, sir. Thank you. We would like to remind participants that you may press star 1 to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Ajay Thakur from Equities Wealth. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, thanks for taking my question. I uh, just wanted to check on one thing. Uh, have we heard from the com uh, from the government in terms of you know uh, the other uh, uh, scheme, exporting export uh, you know uh, promotion scheme? When is it going to be implemented, and what would be the uh, incentive rate which would government will be providing for the same? Any idea or any clarification which is coming from the government on that side? Uh, uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, I mean, it, it remains no for the past four months because in the last con call, uh, also the third quarter con call, also uh, we have been asked the same question. As of now, uh, we did not hear anything about the rates or the scheme process and uh, procedure. Um, so we look forward to it, but of course we hear in the news, uh, uh, same like when everybody else years uh, that it's likely to be announced soon, hopefully this month or early next month. That's what the same we are, we are hearing it from the news. We didn't we do not have any official position uh, informed by the government, even you know formally or informally we didn't get anything so far. So we are waiting 
for uh, the details. Okay, and uh, will it be as in, whenever the new scheme will be implemented? Will it be implemented uh, retrospectively, or will it be you know uh, from the time itself when it's announced? Uh, the la the idea of what we had was it was to be implemented uh, from April first. Okay. That is starting of this financial year FY22. This was what it was it was told then. Now we will definitely get a clarity when once they announce and uh, you know they inform us all the details. But it was told that it will be implemented from the current financial year from the beginning. So I don't know. It could be a change of stand or I don't know if they would even take it to last financial year. And at this point, it's too fluid. We are not able to have a concrete uh, idea about it at this time. Okay. And uh, lastly, uh, in terms of the demand, just wanted to check on uh, how the things are looking from your perspective, because you mentioned about, you know, EU, you are seeing uh, improved demand or, you know, inquiries. Uh, so because of the lot of, you know, uh, restaurants opening up, will we see a dual benefit with both the home consumption also sustaining to that level uh, and also uh, improved sales in the out-of-home consumption as well? Or will we have, you know, one going down and the other one, like, you know, remaining uh, going up kind of stuff? Mm. So what, yeah, overall... Uh... Overall, the uh, demand uh, has picked up uh, very well, uh, but of course, uh, it's definitely um, at this current stage, it is uh, higher, higher, going higher than um, what it was uh, pre-COVID. Uh, but of course, the, this also would create some inventory, uh, the build-up in, uh, inventories overseas, and it should be stabilizing. But uh, your question specifically, just because the food service or restaurant chain demand has picked up, does it mean that there will be a fall in the retail? As of now, we have not seen any such uh, indication. The retail demand continues to be strong in general because the protein uh, requirement has uh, gone up uh, significantly. Um, now with the added uh, restaurant chains and everything opening up. Um, but also the other important point is uh, shrimp. Uh, there are other proteins which are even in seafood, which are currently, um, uh, you know, few other items which are more expensive than shrimp. So the demand for shrimp um, has been uh, quite steady uh, at this point uh, because it is still definitely a good uh, choice and it is the number one preferred um, uh, seafood item in the United States, especially. It is the number one consumed uh, seafood item. So um, that way, uh, the, the, and we are pretty confident that this will remain both in the retail and the food service uh, sector, and we need to see it continues to ma uh, maintain. And right now, we are in the holidays, and things should be good uh, for the summer uh, over the next uh, two months, especially, because in the USA, it is uh, July, August, is all, all these are the summer months as we go, go through them. So the demand should be good. So there's okay. no problem with regard to, there's no fall in demand with from the retail side. With regard to that. Okay, thanks. That's quite helpful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deepesh from Equirit. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Jaudi, sir. Good morning. Uh, congrats for good numbers and challenging times. Uh, sir, in the uh, presentation, you mentioned that shrimp prices are firming up globally. So I just wanted to get a sense that how do you see these prices going up in for FI22? And given the strong exports that India has seen from March onwards, uh, I think it's better than even FI19, FI20 levels, right? FI19 levels. So, uh, so will you be able to reach the 60-65% utilization levels this year? Uh, we should be able to do it... Uh... Uh, on the production side, with regard to utilization, we should be able to utilize it. Uh, of course, um, uh, you know, uh, go with uh, subject to the farmers going for, uh, because right now the first crop has been good. Everything was good so far. We are looking forward for farmers to go for seeding again, which they are doing uh, in some areas. Um, there is also some changes in some species. Some people are going to black tiger. But overall, the, uh, uh, as long as the supply is continuing to be there, with the current year's uh, demand, like you said, uh, which is at a higher level, we are confident that it will remain for the rest of the year. 
uh, especially for uh, because there's a there was a shortage of product overseas and that is being um, so currently the news what we have is that uh, overseas the product is being absorbed as in when it, it is reaching the destination so there is no at, at this point there is no inventory pile up so the demand is continuing uh, for sure at least um, until uh, summer and post summer till thanksgiving that is sometime in october november and uh, so for the rest of the we believe it should be good stable for the rest of the financial year uh, current financial year supply as long as it is good um, yes uh, definitely we should be looking at uh, completing and uh, utilizing the 30% uh, of the capacity for share because it is more the capacity utilization is more to do with um, you know the supply uh, and i hope strongly hope that there is no third wave or anything like that for india uh, which uh, we hear every day and we just hope that because we have had some issues on uh, regarding employees also during this um, recent uh, i mean two months ago or a few, a few months ago so um, so we just hope we don't have issues and definitely we are uh, confident that we be utilizing it subject to the supplies but the, uh, regarding capacity utilization we'll definitely do it we are not um, so is you are saying 50% or 60% because i think we already at 40% right now so so you are saying 50% for the next year no i mean currently we'll def- i thought that whatever i uh, looked at current year we said 50% right current year i think we have said the complete capacity of 29000 metric tons correct we said 50% is minimum is what we were looking to achieve that is uh, approximately uh, 15 to 14000 or 15000 metric tons let us say so that is what we are looking forward to achieve in this current financial year next year is of course uh, as we also add up uh, another line and all that we will we'll give more details as we take formal decisions and I mean, once the things are in place we will we'll let you know later on that sure sir and sir how are the prices doing sir because i heard that international prices are going up right sorry can you repeat that? So how are the how are the international shrimp prices doing because the demand has picked up very sharply while the supply is still limited right so shrimp prices are going up uh, right now or they are still stable the shrimp prices are going up uh, they have gone up uh, for the past uh, uh, two months almost it's been going on in phase wise almost three months sorry for the past two months it's been going up and they have uh, pretty much been uh, stabilizing at uh, um three year old uh, higher pricing and supply wise it is there there is no there are no not much issues with regard to supply as of now we believe that it will continue to be there over the past oh sorry over the next two to three months and as i said subsequent to that it will depend uh, on how the seeding is happening and also any sort of uh, uh, issues at the farm level with regard to any disease or anything but currently the supply is good and the demand is also good so both both ways uh, um in your words we have tail winds on both sides yes everything is finally coming together right uh, uh sir secondly sir the government recently announced the pli scheme for the marine sector right so any anything you are planning because i think only two three companies qualify for that pli scheme so anything you are looking forward to uh, no the we, the company as such does qualify but the point is uh, with regard to the capital investment which they have uh, uh, sought after and uh, also the um, um you know the it is basically on the incremental growth uh, subsequent to from now uh, so we haven't uh, really um, gone ahead with it we did discuss internally but uh, we didn't really go ahead about that because of the capital requirements as such but with regard to revenue and uh, because we are more focused on utilizing our current uh, capacity utilization um uh, which like we just asked the previous question so this year we look forward to utilize 50% minimum uh, of the total capacity of 29000 metric tons and next year we look at uh, 70 75% so while this is going on um uh, for the capital requirement of what they have asked the marine sector of around 75 crores didn't really make sense for us immediately so at this point so anyway as i uh, had last time yes it was an added benefit if it could have been away but however we are more focused on um earning our own uh, better realizations and margins with regard to the products which we are focusing on 
which we have been very Understood. successful over the past few months. Yeah. Right. And so given the higher freight costs that we are seeing for the last six months, your manufacturing and other expenses have not gone gone up, right? So on a per kg basis, if I see, they've actually come down quarter on quarter. So just wanted to understand how was it possible? And do you think the freight costs will hit us in the subsequent quarters? The freight costs are actually have gone up uh, more. Uh, I mean, we have a significant higher cost from the current quarter, which we uh, you know that is the P1 um, because all the rate contracts, uh, service contracts have been signed up at higher levels, especially from this financial year. So, with regard to going up, we do not see uh, at this point. But however, I, 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 it is too premature for me to comment for us to comment at this time because we have also heard uh, people from some exporters, some shippers from China, are saying. Um, quite a huge uh, freight amounts shipping to European Union and all that. So there is, until this logistics problems globally kind of settle down and uh, you know, uh, we do not believe uh, there's going to be an immediate solution um, for this and to get back to lower freight costs immediately. But uh, we definitely hope uh, things will uh, get better soon. Um, I don't, we don't really expect a higher freight cost from here. Um, from now, uh, at least on the current level, uh, but whatever increase we have seen over the past uh, three to four months, uh, you know, that has all uh, been signed up uh, in the month of April and May of the current uh, current year. Um, we have signed the service contracts. Uh, that's Great. when the shipping line signed the new contracts. Yeah. Great. So, lastly, if you can just help me with the incentives booked in the quarter and what was the hatchery sales and the value put added product sales in this quarter, please. Yeah, one minute, please. Um, uh, Vijay Kumar, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, no, this quarter we didn't book any incentive actually for MES. Yeah, no. For MES point of view, we didn't book any because the uh, government has not announced anything. Yes. Drawback, we booked 4.85 lakhs this quarter. 4.85 lakhs, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And so what was the hatchery sales and the value added product sales in this quarter? Hatchery sales uh, this year seven crores. This quarter seven crores. Okay. Uh, and value and added this year, this year came to around 24 crores. Entire year, okay. financial year. Understood, sir. No, no. The value added proportion? Yes. Hello. Sorry. Yeah, value added proportion in the sales in the fourth quarter, sir. Value added products that you generally give that number. How much you have sold? As a percentage of overall. Okay. That. Uh, actually, we'll give you later. Actually, we are not by education sure, sure. balance sure. like sure. that. Sure, no problem. Yeah. I will get it later. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, and all the best. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Participants to ask a question, you may press star in one now. The next question is from the line of Vincent Andrews from Geojit Financial Services. Please go ahead. Mr. Vincent Andrews, the line is unmuted. Please go ahead with your question. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, yes, please. Uh, good, good, good morning. Uh, and uh, congratulations for the good set of numbers in helping conditions. Uh, most of the questions have been answered in the previous uh, uh, answers. And uh, one only one question I have that is related to the uh, capacity utilization. You have already mentioned you are respecting around 50% uh, during the current uh, FI. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I remember uh, during last uh, concourse, uh, you had mentioned like uh, out of this total capacity, 5,000 uh, capacity related to the value added. And you have already um, arrangement with the clients uh, for this uh, capacity. And uh, since you have mentioned in the uh, previous remarks, like the Horeca segment is uh, uh, opening up now in the U.S., so, uh, what is your expectation for the uh, value added uh, capacity and how much uh, increment uh, margins you will get out of this? Uh, 
Yeah, that is the question. Uh, first thing regarding the uh, capacity utilization, uh, I was mentioning to the previous uh, caller about uh, the total capacity utilization of uh, 50% on the overall capacity. Now, with regard to the value added, or sorry, uh, the ready to eat products specifically, we are of course looking um, anywhere between 60 to 70% in the current year. But that is also, of course, subject to our uh, workers and, uh, you know, the subject to the uh, employees being, um, you know, continuously being available. But we are focusing, we are focused on doing, utilizing 60% on the ready to eat primarily. Now, uh, with regard to margins of ready to eat and uh, ready to, um, sorry, uh, sorry, again on the capacity uh, utilization, we did mention in the previous call that we would be looking at optimum utilization of ready to eat, in fact, completely. We, in fact, have, do have the order book with our customers. The issue is more about uh, uh, with regard to operational, operational efficiencies with regard to ready to eat. So we are trying to um, gain them uh, in the current uh, period. So as we do that, we will be looking at uh, optimally utilizing to 75 80%, but we uh, foresee that we'll be having a minimum production of 60% of the 5,000 metric tons um, this year, for sure, minimum. So regarding margins, uh, the uh, I think we have uh, informed prior, uh, it is approximately around one and a half to $2 uh, per kilo over and above uh, the ready-to-cook uh, items. That is with regard to the ready-to-eat items. But then, uh, of late, we have also been developing uh, um, value-added products in the ready-to-cook also, so which are also uh, providing us similar margins or, in fact, uh, same as ready-to-eat. So we are focused on building up more production of those products and thereby uh, both on volume scale as well as, uh, which also uh, makes a higher um, profitability, uh, sorry, higher margin to the company. So that's what uh, we are focusing on. Yeah, uh, thank you. And uh, one more question is like uh, sport incentive. If any delay you are seeing uh, from the government to uh, implement the uh, announce the new uh, structure. So is it manageable from your end? Uh, is it possible to pass on to the uh, uh, farmers, or is it uh, possible to increase the price at a um, export? Uh, uh, sorry, say at sales level. Uh, without affecting the competition, uh, competition there. How you manage that? Sorry, can you re repeat your question? How you how you manage the export? Uh, how you manage the uh, export incentive? Uh, the uh, incentive has dropped uh, till the time uh, the new structure is coming. Uh, how you manage? Is it possible to pass on to the um, farmers? Uh, from uh, is it possible that? Uh, see, first thing is um, uh, incentive is not something which is given by the government uh, as if uh, it, that in, in incentive uh, it, it is not something which is given by the government on a farmer basis. It is it is basically an, an, uh, part of the income uh, of the company and it is part of the income of the industry. So when the farmers are having their farm gate price, it uh, calculate it basically involves includes everything things like not just the incentive but also the costs the overseas selling price and also the supply here that so it is all a multiple uh, multi-factor point uh, for, with regard to the farm gate pricing so yes the incentive if given once given by the government of india is also being passed on to a certain extent to the farmers dependent on the situation then that is the market dynamics um, so it's not something like where we are Awarding separately something to the farmers. Okay. Yeah. It is an indirect uh, benefit which the farmers get through the market uh, pricing. Yeah, yeah and the uh, that, That's all from my end. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitesh Chen from Birla Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chaudhary. Yeah, please. Uh, yeah. Sir, I uh, basically. 
considering the dynamics of your order book uh, mainly from the us customer and also the labor availability at your factories both the factories and also uh, the shipping or the logistic problem which we explained in detail uh, considering all these three and the trade off between all three or four of uh, them what kind of volumes can you do uh, in fy 22 in current fiscal year uh on your capacity of nearly 29000 metric ton of course there is fourth element also which is this which is the most important one which is the basically the culture itself and the farming activity so uh, given i i know this is quite dynamic at at this point but still would you believe that you can do a uh, upward of 20000 tons what is your internal estimate for this financial year Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Jain. So there is a disturbance coming from your line. I request you to mute your line while the management answers your question. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Sorry, can uh, you said um, how much are we going to utilize our capacity? Is that what you asked? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so which I, yeah, okay. which I did mention, uh, respond to one of the previous callers uh, is that we uh, we are uh, pretty confident that we will be utilizing at least fifty percent of our. Total capacity of 29,000 odd metric tons in the current financial year. This is uh, um, not just to do with uh, order books or uh, you know uh, um, just the, of course after like you said after uh, um, considering the supply situation also. But mainly the thing is our uh, we are uh, uh, improvising our efficiencies in the new facility. So most of our volume. Um, of the um, of the uh, 50% of the total um, utilized like capacity utilization will be from the new facility so we are actually uh, improvising it as we um, grow it further we will be able to so that we are looking at anything over 15000 metric tons you know, of the 29000 tons we are looking at and yeah. we are looking 14000 14000 to 15000 metric tons you know, that's what we are looking yeah between all the so, markets and whatever now okay. yeah 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 sorry tell so, sir basically basically here uh, there is a follow up question here i mean in a robust demand scenario uh, which is prevalent currently in particularly in us market where 85% of your products you sell to us uh, you know geography uh, i am actually quite uh, surprised or perplexed to understand why we are guiding only say 50% given the fact that we have a 20000 um, tons brand new uh, you know most efficient plant in the country and we have a good demand from the us market uh, so why only 50% why not 70 80% type of utilization what is the problem here this point number 1 point number 2 if you still guide for the 50% when do you see apex frozen food as a company can do nearly 22 24000 tons of sales in any one particular year when that can happen we uh, think okay why we are doing we are only looking at around the 50 60 or something and up to 50 60 percent in the past year is of course uh, considering all factors of efficiency even in the uh, value added uh, products which is not not ready to eat but even for doing uh, utilizing the new facility of apex we also Uh, need to support it with a lot of peeled product we are not doing commodity shrimp which can be done in mass volume so naturally when you want to do more to the markets like usa and european union um, where most of the value added products go even in ready to cook even in the raw so for that the capacity expansion is happening the more and more uh, we already have one pre processing facility which has been uh, utilized uh currently which is mostly supporting the old facility we are also adding a, 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 there are plans to add additional another uh, pre processing facility by the end of this year which will be available for next year that is why in the current setup of infrastructure we believe that uh, with the amount of value added sorry uh, when i'm saying value added it's not ready to eat what i'm saying is with the amount of peeled product what we can cater to the processing facilities which have a 29000 metric tons uh, in total we have to support those two facilities which with that much amount of uh, peel product which are required for these for the markets like usa where you, what where you rightly said which has 
85% uh, 80% of our uh, total business so we need to provide more and more uh, peel products which will uh, we are confident that we'll be able to do more next year uh, once we also um, uh, finish up the other uh, support facility so that is the scenario that is the main reason only for doing uh, commodity based shrimp headless shallon or head on shallon whole shrimp get the raw commodity shrimp which we do to china uh, well uh, if we do only such product we can do 75% of the total 29000 metric tons in the current financial year itself actually <laughs> the problem was that uh, our company is not focused on doing um, um, commodity shrimp or commodity products sorry to commodity markets rather our focus is in more of value enhanced products even in the raw stage so for that uh, the facilities which are of course the new facility which is a uh, uh, 20000 metric tons uh, but however it has uh, uh, limitations on the amount of pre processed product which can be catered to under its current floor space so we are also uh, going to add that further and we are uh, of course support also getting some support from our existing pre processing facility thereby um, further improve- improvement will be there um as we come to the end of this financial year so from next year we believe it's going to be much higher it is supported by these uh three plus uh, sorry field products that is on that uh, front i'm sorry your second question i um, i can get you can you repeat that please i'm sorry no i i was just asking like on a practically uh, given the portfolio or the products which you focus on as a company Uh, in one particular financial year how much the maximum sales that you can do on this 29000 capacity is it 20000 uh, tons of finished product is it 22000 24000 uh, we could do around 21 to 20 22000 75% of the finished finished uh, volume yeah finished product finished product finished right. product yeah, yeah. and actually uh, uh, lastly um, this year us shrimp prices have been going up in last couple of months particularly in us market so can you confirm how much they have gone up in percentage terms um the per price uh, has gone global shrimp by... sorry yeah yeah us buying uh, prices uh, yeah. between uh, between uh, 15 to 20% minimum 15 to 20% and whereas in india farm gate prices are stable or have they also gone up or they are stable and the farm gate prices have been stable they are not gone okay so to that extent uh, we must uh, i i i hope uh, you understand where the demand is high overseas yes the supply is high domestically perfect so Got it, that answers uh, tailwinds on both things yeah yeah mentioned earlier in this call correct yeah. perfectly got it thank you very much appreciate it. that's all from my side yeah. thank you thank you the next question is from the line of ashwini agarwal from ashmore investment management please go ahead sir just going uh, into some figures last year you did 11700 uh, tons out of this how much tonnage was ready to eat and value add versus commodity would you have those tonnage numbers available uh, the 11000 metric tons did not have any ready to eat remember the first financial year uh oh you mean sorry you mean last year means fi fi 21 sorry sorry i'm just yes yes fi 21 correct one minute please that was total uh, for the last quarter was uh, 21% uh, but uh, one minute We're ready to eat for uh, hello yeah yeah it is around 2500 metric tons No, no. How much, sir? Percentage wise, sir. Ah, okay, very good. Hmm. Okay. So, how much? Four thousand five hundred tons or two thousand five hundred tons? Ah, two thousand five hundred tons. Two thousand was ready to eat. 
Okay. Yes. And how much would be the value added on the ready to cook segment in terms of tons? Sorry, in ready to cook value added would be almost uh, in the uh, approximately around seven thousand five hundred to. 7,500 tons, I think, 8,000 final product, finished product which is exported, because we do not have um, more than 10% or uh, 10 to 15% of our total ready to cook as a commodity or the base for baseline uh, products. We have a majority of our uh, production. What we have been uh, doing so far in the is value added or sorry. And I'm saying value added uh, steel product in the ready to cook also. So the yeah. So it lo- it's only around 10 to 15 percent of. So it's around maximum uh, on a high side it will be uh, around um, 800 to 900 tons, very high side. So after uh, that's that's the maximum which we do in the form of form of uh, headless chevron. Whatever we do. And, in China and the little uh, bit. Uh, Okay, okay. And uh, sir, you're adding another 5,000 tons of ready to cook, right? At the end of fiscal 22, which is the current financial year, you expect to have totally about 34,000 tons. 5,000 metric tons of ready to eat, sorry. Ready to eat, ready to eat, sorry. Another 5,000. Yeah, right. Yes, yes. So, what's your uh, remaining capex for this year, sir? The, uh, it, I mean, this we expect it to be completed before the end of this uh, current financial year. So uh, it is not; it's not uh, significant, but uh, it will be. It will not be more than a million. I'm uh, sorry, that's around um, six, uh, seven, seven, seven and a half crores max. Mm-hmm. Maximum, maximum seven, crores. Seven. The current year, we we plan for around uh, five to five and a half, but then we are uh, planning some additional components, so it's going to be maximum seven and a half to eight crores. That's all. Okay, okay. And when you spoke earlier in the conversation about 17,000 tons or 18,000 tons for the next financial year, which is 22-23, are you taking uh, ready to cook uh, and the expanded capacity at 34,000 or that would be not utilized over the next year? No, I I have uh, not mentioned the number of uh, tons of capacity utilization for next financial year. Uh, what I have mentioned was the current financial year, we are looking at a minimum of 50% of the total utilization, which yes. would be anywhere between 14,000 to 15,000 metric tons. And for the next year, we are looking at uh, 70, 70, uh, 70%. Uh, in, uh, so in this, we have not factored in the new uh, additional uh, um, 5,000 metric tons of ready to eat. But when the additional line uh, comes uh, our uh, of ready to eat our focus will be to utilize the ready to eat lines uh, uh, with a full efficiency even if it is uh, at a little bit of compromise on one of the ready to cook line so i hope you understand what i'm saying where we we try to uh, utilize we utilize more of the uh, ready to eat lines ready to eat capacity so that we have better realization as well as better margins. Okay. Okay. And uh, coming back to the shipping costs, uh, I understand that in the industry, it's typically, uh, you know, cost including freight. So freight, whatever is the freight cost has to be absorbed by you. Uh, So does that mean that, you know, because you've signed new contracts with uh, pretty much all the shipping lines over April and May, that there will be uh, headwind to the margins on account of shipping costs, or are these reflecting in the high higher prices of shrimp that are prevailing? I'm I'm just trying to figure out how the who ends up paying for the shipping costs at the end of the day, the consumer or is it you? Uh, one of the most important point is uh, the one of, the reason why the shrimp pricing is also going up. Uh, is also the freight costs which which get uh, get added to the cost of the shipper, so it will be passed on to the customers, which thereby gets passed on to the um, consumers eventually, naturally, because it's a, the freight cost is uh, to deliver uh, to be delivered to them. So uh, the freight cost is increased across the board, whether it is China, 
Asia, sorry, European Union or USA or Canada, everywhere the freights have increased and thereby uh, the prices also, uh, there have been some effect of the freight costs also uh, to a certain extent on the increased pricing, not just the demand. Uh, so that's uh, that's where I had mentioned 15% earlier in the increase of uh, pricing. But that, of course, that we will be looking at the increased um, pricing more into the future as uh, as you know, um, because of these logistics issues, the shipments are, there's a lag of uh, delay in the shipments by almost uh, three to four weeks, even after the production is completed, uh, after the, the product is completed because of lack of equipment for shipments. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully, on the margin front, you have the tailwind of good supply, you have the sort of more value added product mix in the in the revenue mix more ready to uh, eat and hopefully the shipping costs are being paid for via the higher shipping prices so on the margin yes, side we should have a it is taking care we should be looking at a better um, margins uh, um, for sure as long as the situation prevails um, uh, like you said there are some aspects of freight and some aspects of some increased costs which are uh, being factored into the higher prices but also there's an increase in uh, because of the demand there's also a, an increase in pricing so overall uh, the increased pricing is also taking care of these enhanced costs that's uh, yeah that is true yeah sure sure thank you and all of it thank you thank you the next question is from the line of nitin avasti from east india securities please go ahead Hello, sir. Just wanted to understand on the balance sheet, capital working progress shows 15 crores. So, uh, where is this? What is this asset being created? Is this an uh, hatchery expansion? That is uh, one minute. Uh, yeah, it is hatchery expansion only. Hello. Hello. Okay, sir. Okay, got it, sir. Uh, now, coming to follow up question on that, have we reached the optimal size that we were looking to be in the hatchery business or are we looking to scale it up further? Sorry, can you repeat your question, please? So, have we reached the size that we wanted to reach in the hatchery business or we intend to scale up even further, even faster? No, no, we, we definitely have reached the size. Uh, it is, in fact, we have not yet been able to utilize this capacity even the, as on date because we are awaiting for uh, the approvals from the government of India, uh, the Coastal Aquaculture Authority, uh, primarily, and some audits to be done. Uh, so we, but for sure, with this added capacity, we definitely, yeah, it is uh, very much sufficient for us to. Um, uh, take help uh, with regard to growing our uh, partnerships or sorry, the network with uh, the primary producers, the farmers. So definitely, it is, the capacity is very much sufficient for us, for our company. We are not looking at any further scaling uh, with, with regard to hatcheries as on date. Uh, we may be looking at uh, alternative species simultaneously, um, maybe, um, but at uh, this time it is too premature out of these hatches to support, support to our uh, farmers. Thereby we buy the uh, products from them uh, once they harvest. So. Okay, so noted. Uh, on the other front, so we're seeing a lot of these farmers going for black tiger uh, this time around. And uh, just wanted to understand from a processor side of it, um, because we have been servicing our customers with Manami all this while, uh, once Black Tiger comes into the picture, how does it change? So do we start getting a premium for, can we do the same product in the same manner and get a premium for the product because it's Black Tiger? Or uh, will it be shrimp? Doesn't matter which shrimp at the end of the day. Uh, could you please comment on that? Yeah, in fact, uh, one of the reasons why I had mentioned just a few seconds ago about we looking at alternate species is also about this particular topic is black tiger. Now, um, your question regarding getting a premium for black tiger is nearly impossible. It will definitely have a higher price, but a significantly high pricing is going to, um, uh, you know, demotivate the consumer to look at that species. We are going to look at it as shrimp. Yes, for the appearance, uh, the flavor profile, the consumer is willing to pay extra, but it is little extra. It's not that they're going to uh, 
pay a huge price difference between Vaname and Black Tiger, uh, between uh, white, the white shrimp or the Black Tiger. But yes, there are customers even today who are looking for the supply of Black Tiger uh, from across the globe. It has been limited because the world has been dominated with uh, Vaname and it has been proven a very steady and consistent supply chain uh, with regard to Vaname supply. Now, as Black Tiger uh, gets, uh, becomes more and more successful o- over the next uh, few months and years, uh, if it remains steady and consistent in supply, for sure it will have its own, um, it will create its own shelf space uh, across the globe. Um, but it will not have a significantly high premium. There will be a price difference for sure. Black Tiger will fetch better pricing. Um, uh, because of its, uh, as I said, flavor of fire and appearance and all that. But it is not going to be too expensive. If it is too expensive, it will be a turn off. The consumers will be turned off from that. So that is also a key part. So it is going to be very important for us to maintain a, a reasonably stable pricing uh, of Black Tiger products uh, overseas in comparison to the Vanami. Uh, so that is uh, how it is. Limited supply can get consumed at a little higher prices, but one, once we want a mass supply to be pl- placed in the market, we need to be reasonably priced when compared to anime. That is how the market has take, taken it so far. That's how it, uh, when it became too expensive, uh, Black Tiger ended up being a, a, a kind of a turn off for by many of the consumers and consumers. Noted, sir. Thank you, sir. That was all from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Srinivas Reddy and an individual investor. Please go ahead. Mr. Srinivas Reddy, your line is unmuted. Please go ahead with yeah. your question. Is it audible? Yes, sir. You may go Yeah, I'm, Sri- I'm Srinivas. I have a question for you about that MEI's license. So, uh, sir, uh, has, uh, you have booked the earlier quarter's MIS license. Whether you have received total amount or is there any pending amount in that? No, we have not booked any MEI, any MEIs for the quarter. Oh, no, I earlier it was informed quarter. earlier. Yeah. Sorry. So, I'm asking so MEIs was only I'm booked. Uh, the MEIs was only booked till August end, pretty much, uh, because in, uh, I mean September it was hardly. So it was only booked till the second quarter. Okay. It was not. Uh, it was not booked uh, subsequent to that. Uh, once the government made it clear, we didn't book any time. So what are the book days? Uh, we have received everything. Sorry. What are the MEIs license? We have booked it in the books and we have received it. No, no, no. It is still receivable. It is, it is, it is receivable. Okay. So when can I expect the new scheme, sir? Uh, so I heard that first question is there, but uh, just by marking, is there any? Even, no. I'm sorry. Even we are even we are also waiting from the government of India to announce uh, soon. So we are waiting for in, uh, the announcement, and once they give a clarity, you know, we will keep you informed in our next. I mean, sorry, future con calls. Thank you. And I'm sure you will also be aware from the media. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Subrania Chaudhary for closing comments. Thank you, everybody, for coming to this uh, con call of uh, Q4 and uh, the full year FI21. Um, we hope you continue to remain safe you and your families and hope you have a good day take care bye-bye thank you on behalf of apex frozen foods limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines